part of being in space. I really like looking at the planet Earth from being 300 miles up. It's a really, really beautiful planet and we get to go around the planet every 90 minutes. So I would get to see a sunrise and a sunset every 90 minutes. I'm an astronaut, I work for NASA, and I've worked for NASA for about 12 years. And I went to fix the Hubble Space Telescope about three years I ago. That. You do, you were there, weren't you? You don't remember though, you were so small. But so today I have a book, I have a book to read to you today. It's called Astronaut Handbook. First, you need to decide what kind of astronaut you will be. There are astronauts who fly the space shuttle, there are astronauts who conduct scientific experiments, such as growing plants, and astronauts who repair satellites. Becoming an astronaut takes a lot of preparation. It's important to study hard in school. Studying isn't always easy, but stick with it. You will have to pass some tough fitness tests to become an astronaut. One test is to swim in your flight suit and sneakers. No, you know what, you, you are trained so well for the job that you're doing and you know, we had things go wrong. We had master alarms go off right uh, at liftoff. Uh, you don't really even have time to be scared because you're so focused on the job, the training that you are supposed to do. We spend hundreds of hours in simulators before we go and they break everything that they can think of breaking and they break you know, everything all at once. And so you really, your training just really clicks in and you immediately know, okay, I need to be looking here, I need to move this switch, I need to say this next. And you, it, really does, um, it really does work, that training. It's, real, it's conditioning. And you know, after the fact, you think, wow, that was, that was kind of scary. But in the moment, you're really not scared at all. <laughs> oh, well. Training, we call it training. <laughs> it's also important to be a team player. While in space, you'll be eating, sleeping, and working in very tight quarters with many other people. So be nice to your neighbor and no fighting. Now that you can work well with others, it's time for survival training. This training will help toughen you up and prepare you to live in harsh conditions. You guys ever been camping? Everyone been camping before? That's a little bit like survival training. Those of you who want to be a pilot of the space shuttle need to learn how to fly. This is called a T-38, it's a training jet. So we feel right now one, one force of gravity, we call it 1G basically here on Earth every day of our lives. Um, fighter pilots that fly um, jet airplanes for the Air Force or the Navy, they might feel up to 9 Gs in some of the, when they pull a really tight corner or some do some crazy maneuver in an airplane. On a roller coaster, you might feel around 3 Gs, but you only feel it for a split second if you turn a really tight corner or something. On the space shuttle, we get up to 3 Gs, um, but it lasts about a minute. And so that feels, because you're on your back, it does feel like somebody's standing on your chest. So it's hard to move your arms. It, is, it takes an effort to breathe um, because it lasts for kind of a longer time, but it's not more than 3 Gs. So you can learn to, you train to handle that. This is what the space suit looks like. So you'll wear this suit while working outside the space shuttle. It's white to reflect rays of the sun. It will be fitted to your exact measurements. Most of the time when we're in the space shuttle, once we, once we finish the ascent, um, we get out of our big orange suit and we just wear regular clothes, just like what I'm wearing today. We wear a polo shirt and, and khaki pants. Um, the space suit that you go outside of the space station weighs about 280 pounds, so you couldn't walk on it on Earth. The orange suit maybe weighs, I don't know, around 20 pounds. It's not, you can walk in and it's not too bad. You'll have to sit for as long as three hours before liftoff. Can you guys sit still for three whole hours? It's a long time and you're actually laying on your back with your feet up in the air. Get ready for the ride of your life. Three, two, one, blast off! Very good. <laughs> it takes about eight and a half minutes from sitting still on the launch pad to being floating in space. It's not very long, is it? So you go really, really fast. It's a really, um, it's a pretty amazing ride on the rocket. It's really cool. You're going faster every second and shaking pretty hard. But it's, uh, and then all of a sudden the engines cut off and you're floating. So you have to be strapped into your seat or you float right out of your seat. So you described um, liftoff, but you described what it's like for reentry. Reentry is much less dynamic. So there's a lot less energy. Well, the same amount of energy that you're burning off, but you take more time to do it. So you're basically you you turn the shuttle around in the direction that you're heading, and you fire the um, you fire the big engines, and that slows you down enough to recontact the atmosphere. And you're kind of um, nose up, you know, belly to the atmosphere. So you take the heat load on the belly of the space shuttle 
and you see that you know that you see the, the the plasma basically trail off the spatial you can see it out the overhead windows and it's wild I mean it looks like you're on fire it's pretty amazing um, but but the movement itself is very gentle as you get lower you start to feel the effects of gravity again and one of the things we'll do when we're not busy monitoring the systems is you take your pencil off of your kneeboard which is attached by a tether of course and you start letting it go and and once it starts to drop you know it'll first it'll drop really slowly and then it'll start dropping faster and then it's dropping at the regular rate and you know that you're back in the you know full full 1g the other thing that happens is you feel like an elephant is standing on your head and so you get you know you get kind of crunched down in your seat because you've been weightless for two weeks and all of a sudden you know just 1g what we have in this room just feels like it's crushing your spine and uh, so I found myself bracing myself against the pushing in front in the seat in front of me and then I realized that's the commander's seat. I probably don't want to be shaking his seat while he's getting ready to land. So you, you really had to make an effort to keep your head up. And then when we actually landed and I took my helmet off, it felt like it weighed 150 pounds. I mean, I thought I was going to drop it on the floor because it just, you know, your body's, your brain adapts that quickly to microgravity. It's, it's pretty amazing. I think right now for the space station, which we have astronauts living on the space station um, year round, um, 365 days a year and they've been up there for, for over 10 years now and they're working on a lot of different types of, of um, scientific experiments and so a lot of those are directed at um, making it safe or understanding how people survive long term in microgravity so that we can go farther, that we could potentially have a, a, a base on the moon. Uh, for me personally I would like to see us go to Mars and see what we can find out on Mars and see you know is there really water there, Are there was there ever life there you know, I think that's the kind of thing that we could achieve in, in our lifetimes. We could see some of your kids going, um, going to Mars one day and making some of these discoveries. So the space station is part of that equation where they're looking at how we can learn how to have people survive in space long term. Um, but we have you know, lots of other things, you know, robotic probes that can go farther than people can go um, to learn about the planets that are farther away. We have the Hubble Space Telescope that looks out at the universe to discover you know, things that are so far away we don't know if we'll ever get there. It's probably been since third grade since I studied about Pluto. Why did I decide to be an astronaut? Well, it looked like a lot of fun and it looked like a big challenge and I liked the idea of working hard to achieve something that would be lots and lots of fun and it really was. I've, I've only spent, I spent half of my life preparing to be an astronaut and I spent 14 days in space and it was absolutely worth it. It was really fun. <laughs>